Hey everyone, Dan the Wolfman here, and welcome to Old School MMA number two. Of course, it wasn't MMA back then, it was NHB, no holds barred fighting. Number one on Dan Severn, number two, not training with, but fighting, longtime Pancrase champion Yuki Kondo. What was it like? How did Dan the Wolfman go to Japan for the first time to fight the Pancrase champion? How did that all happen? Well, how that happened was, I kind of put together years later, is that Yuki Kondo had just brutally KO'd a guy I would later train with for a year, saw a lower barrel, 22 seconds, hit him with a knee, and then boom, 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 follow up, he fell through the ropes, blood hit the camera, blood was everywhere, a 22 second KO on multi-time world Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu champion, saw a lower barrel. And if you could do that too, when everyone in 2000, mind you, everyone thinks a top jujitsu guy can't be beat, and you bloody destroy a guy in 22 seconds, everyone was scared to fight Yuki Kondo. I heard from guys later, yes, I turned down that fight. They were scared. They were pansies. Unlike the Wolfman, who just being three and one at the time with three first round submissions, I was training jujitsu. Um, in like a racquetball court or something with Marcelo Grosso, a Brazilian top team black belt. So he had left the JKD school. I had originally trained with him at, and he was at this other location. And I get a phone call. My girlfriend got the front desk, like at some fitness place, to run back and get me in the middle of class and say, you got to get home. There's a call from Japan. So I literally like, Say, sir, I got to go. He's like, go. I said, I think this is the fight Yuki Kondo. And he, of course, knew that Solo had just lost. So he goes, go, 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 my brother. And boom, I drive home. I Hopefully the statute of limitations on speeding has passed. I'm sure I drove home at Mach 5. And I run in because they said, you got one hour. We're going to call back. And we need to know. And so I got a call. Are you willing to fight? Yuki Kondo in two weeks. Maybe it was less than two weeks. So two weeks notice. Everyone else had turned it down. So I go to Japan and, you know, tired from jet lag and everything else. Uh, actually, I'll go back. The, so I wanted to fly to train with Frank Shamrock to get some confidence. And then Frank, who was a, kind of a friend of mine, Frank goes, well, I'm getting no surgery. I'm sorry. He first he said, yeah. And then he goes, oh, I'm having no surgery. I can't be able to help you train for this fight, right? It was just going to be for like a day to get some confidence. I said, Pancrase, hold over the flight in LA for a day before going on since I'm flying that direction anyway. And so then I called Boss Rutten. And I'm like going to go to train at Beverly Hills Jiu-Jitsu Academy with Boss. So I go to train with Boss. And I tell Boss that my crazy idea, I'm going to start the fight with a chain punch, a Wing Chun chain punch, a JKD straight blast. He goes, no, 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 no. Just focus on a right cross and a right kick. And I held pads for Boss. And he gives me the hardest, probably one of the hardest right crosses. And I think the hardest right round kick I've ever held tie pads for. <laughs> And anyway, I got Amir Renatavar, Renatavaldi, whatever Amir's name is, who you can see in some stunt shows in the background, like the unit and a knife fight and stuff like that. Amir's giving me knees to the head from a side mount. I'm like, whoa, bro, what's that? And actually, it was going to be allowed in the rules. So he's like, well, here you go, because it was going to be Coliseum 2000 rules. Coliseum 2000, where Kondo just, was that when he beat Sperry? No, Sperry was later at Pride. Well, that's where Kondo had beat Solo or Barrel Bloody through the ropes. And Funaki had his fight against Hicks and Gracie. So Coliseum 2000 rules were basically pride rules. All right. So I'm trying to get confidence. But then that night, I train with some of the new... I sleep, hang out with and sleep at the neutral grounds house. Some of the fighters stayed in the house together. And I start throwing up in the middle of the night. The night, the day before I'm leaving from L.A. to go to Japan. So I go to Japan, and I'm sick as a dog. Now, we go to the Pancrase P-Labs dojo to, you know, do some training and whatnot. 
I'm sick as a dog. No one wanted to train with me. Shoney International Carter was still willing to roll with me, and I will ever thank him for that because he was willing to roll and kind of probably hold pads and work out with me and stuff. And the press came there. It was like a media day, and I could not hide the fact that I was sicker than a dog. Okay. So um, I decided not to hide the fact, and I tell the press that like a wounded samurai, I'm going to go out there and live or die by the sword. I know that my cardio is probably not going to last. I'm going to go straight at him. And that's, and so they love me. So Pancrase said, you, Wolfman, you stay and we're going to send everybody else home. You're going to stay and we're going to have the young boys cook you chinku, sam, uh, um, sumo wrestler soup. So I stayed and they cooked me chinku, I think it's called the sumo soup. And anyway, I'm sick as a dog, and I went, and I, man, I was so sick. So, so sick leading up to the fight. And I took a walk to Tokyo Dome to go to the arcade, and I played. I'm like, this is the only, I need to warm up my lungs at least once before the fight. And I did uh, a Fist of the North Star game yeah, da, 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 to prepare for the fight. So anyway, I'm still pretty sick, and I go to the venue, and it was a day uh, B, day A, like a double event. Pancreas had done that a few times back in the day with the Neo Blood Tournament. And uh, Shoney Carter is fighting in the daytime. Brian Gassaway, who I think just passed, rest in peace, I believe. I hope I'm right on that. I mean, I hope I'm wrong on that, but you get what I'm saying. Um, a lot of people, you know, I know from the day have been starting to, anyway, father time, undefeated. And anyway, um, so I'm the main event of the the. the Main event of the nighttime. And I have my friend there, and you warm up a little bit with 20 punches up high, and I still think that's the best way. You should always roll punches before a fight, and you should get punching fast to get your hands ready to go, okay? Not just hard stuff on the pads, but get going. <laughs> get going fast, and then throw like 20 punches up high, get your lungs expanded, get ready to go. And I get in the ring, and it's funny. I think you can watch this on UFC Fight Pass now. And I'm all excited, all excited, and then I stop. And this serene calm comes over me. And I look out, and it's in kind of red lighting, and it looks really cool. And I, I, I saw it on Fight Pass. And you can watch the full fight. I pieced together back in the day two different videos. The full fight, uh, because there was just highlights on uh, uh, VHS they put out back in the day. Um, and I, I, I combined what I had and you could see the fight on my YouTube channel, Dan the Wolfman. Anyway, so I, I love that look out in the crowd. And lo and behold, I start with Bruce Lee's favorite technique. I'm the first guy to ever do Bruce Lee's favorite technique, an ugly straight blast. But there was no elbows allowed because then I, I teach to grab the head and elbow. But I go boom, boom, boom. And I hit him really good with one of them. And then I throw a right hook. But it kind of hit to the back of his head. Like he kind of crashed through that. And then I threw, a, I think, a left high kick. And anyway, it was a really fun fight. He drove me to the ropes. And I made a mistake trying to be aggressive. Knee, 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 knee. And I gave up an underhook. And then I all double under and he pushed me in the ropes. And I knew it was coming. Like, you got to be smart when you're fighting. I knew he was going to use the rebound off the ropes to suck my hips in to get the takedown. And then we're guard. And I'm trying to uh, have his arm really good. Had I known how good, I could have actually, when he was trying to yank it out i could have done the frank mer bet udi Garami a lot that, that frank Mir did to uh roberto traven who i later rolled with just two years ago i rolled with roberto uh, about three times and um but he was pulling the arm out and then i go bah, 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 and i do a boxing blast basically from my back trying it's hard to generate power most fighters still to this day don't know how to generate power from the bike and i boxing blast here and i heel kicked him in the face hoist gracie style kick, kicks to the head on the ground, we're allowed, but no elbows, okay, so I heel kick him in the face, and then he goes to get up, and I do an up kick, and I do a get up to base, and then I see a, I think a right low kick coming, and I let down, and whoom, it would have kicked my head off to Kroki and Hall, where Mick Foley lost his ear, anyway, um, 
then I get half guard and I relax for a minute. And this was a very high, so a short fight, but high pace, like movie style fight. I think it was a very exciting fight. And then I let my guard down and he did something I wasn't aware of at the time that I became quite a master at. The spin of Rooney knee bar and he starts breaking my knee and I, I'm hit, I hit him, I hit him, I hit him. And then, ah, I yell because he was freaking tearing the ligaments in my knee. Um, so I get up, he raises my hand to the crowd. I don't know if I deserve it, but I did surprise him later in SRS magazine. A year later, someone in Japan told me about it and sent me a copy. And I got my Japanese teacher at the time at university to translate it. And he's saying that I got in his head. He just destroyed this very famous fighter. And then a, a no name guy with only a few fights from the Midwest comes in and when i did that straight blast he got worried because he was thinking he would have to destroy me obviously faster than 22 seconds after destroying jujitsu legend solo Ribeiro. so um it is interesting that psychologically that straight blast while there's not power and it didn't look all that great it did psychologically get in his head which I, is why i said and i told boss i was going to surprise him with it and maybe i should have just focused hard on a two three and a right low kick you know maybe i would have done better but at the time i was very inexperienced i'd only been doing jujitsu for three years um and training with severin and stuff for like three years and mma experience for basically three years so to go against longtime pancreas champion who's now 62 wins 38 losses and nine draws who's fought everybody, he fought semi shield three times, guy Mesger, uh, Barnett, he fought everybody, bigger guys, and that, he was the open weight champion, even though he probably weighed about 197, 198 himself. Um, and now he's down to like 170. But in the day, he was pretty pretty solid guy, uh, but he wasn't the biggest guy, and he fought all these giants and did really well, and was a multi-multi, I think like five-time Pancras world champion. And later, I did go commentate the first five live pancreas events pancreas 270 276 one of them wasn't in there on ufc fight pass so if you got a ufc fight pass i think you'll really enjoy my commentary the main events of 270 and 273 were extremely off the hook check dan the wolfman out as a color commentator and let me know who spots the setups and the weird submissions earlier joe rogan or dan the wolfman joe rogan that i rolled with for two years but that's another video you can go find anyway guys i hope you enjoyed this edition of old school mma that was really nhb no old fighting with those kicks to the head on the ground hope you enjoyed it and look for number three kaboom